Good afternoon. My name is Pauline van Dongen. I'm a Dutch fashion designer, and I specialize in the combination of fashion and technology, or wearable technology, as we call it. But most of all, I'm a curious person. My inquisitive nature often drives me towards things that I don't know or do not master in terms of skills. A big part of my work evolves around creating something that is new. It's about adapting knowledge and processes from outside my design practice and looking at how fashion can benefit from it. So by working closely with companies from the field of science and innovation, I aim to infuse fashion with technology in a truly wearable way. And by doing so, I want to move beyond the realm of gadgets and instead create desirable products that can add new meaning and value to fashion. So in my studio in Arnhem, I research the behavior of experimental and high-tech materials on the human body. Central to my approach is the relationship between bodies and space. Or even more specifically, the space between our bodies and the garment. And this is what I like to call the void. In a Western society, void sometimes has a negative connotation, which is why I feel more closely related to the Asian concept, where emptiness, or ma, as they say in Japanese, is actually something that contains a lot of potential. So I'm highly inspired by the work of Anthony Gormley, a British sculptor, because he shows us so beautifully the space that our bodies inhabit. He creates these kind of auras that blur the boundaries between our bodies and the surroundings. So let me ask all of you something. Who of you was already familiar with the term wearable technology? Can we please raise hands? Wow, that's actually quite good. Great. And who of those people already owns a piece of wearable technology? Even if it's just a heart rate sensor that you use for jogging? Can I see some hands? Oh, I still have a lot of work to do. <laughs> okay, so today I'd like to show you some examples of my work to give you an insight in how wearable technology will develop in the near future, but especially what it can mean to all of us. Technology is an extension of the human body. We expand our bodies through tools and objects to strengthen our physical and mental abilities. And clothing, in that sense, as an extension of the human skin, is by definition a technological product. But technology is often seen as something harsh and metallic, something mechanical or robotic. So my aim is to make it soft and bring it close to the body by naturalizing it. So I personally don't like to make any distinction between nature and technology, because technology is in fact what makes us human. And I'm very fascinated by the philosophy of next nature, which shows us how the notion of nature has been shifting, and actually how artificial man-made systems are starting to behave and look like natural systems. So this is where we come from. Looks pretty funny, huh? This is wearable computing. And here we were still quite harshly putting technology on our clothing. But electronics are getting smaller, and I believe that ultimately, the technology should and will become invisible, working from the inside out on a very intuitive level. Just like in this cardigan that I developed in collaboration with a PhD student, Martijn ten Boomer, at the University of Technology in Eindhoven. And this is Vigor. And Vigor is a body monitoring garment meant for dementia patients. It tracks their movement and their activity. And it helps physiotherapists in doing so. And we've developed our own stretch sensors that are made by knitting conductive yarn on the inside of the garment, and it's all soft. So actually, the wearer doesn't have to worry about what's going on on the inside. It's just a really comfortable, good-looking garment. So by experimenting with new materials and technologies, I constantly try to innovate traditional craftsmanship. And an example of my approach is this shoe design that I developed back in 2010. And it became the first fully 3D printed shoe design in the world. And I'm still very fascinated by 3D printing. It has so many opportunities. So wearable technology can enhance the way we experience our surroundings. 
We can integrate sensors and actuators to become more aware of our bodies, like Vigor does. We can use smart materials that respond to changes in our surroundings, temperature, humidity. And in a way, up until now, our clothing has been enveloping our bodies in a quite static way. While in the meantime, our surroundings are becoming more responsive and smart. I mean, look at Dan's smart highways. It's the perfect example of this. So I hope you agree with me that clothing should start playing a role in this connected environment too. So I'm very interested in the concept of liquid modernity, which was introduced by the sociologist Sigmund Baumann. And he describes the idea that our contemporary surroundings are constantly changing and they kind of have become liquid under the influence of technology. So the future of fashion, to me, lies in its premise to be dynamic, adaptive and responsive, just like our fluid surroundings. So for one of my recent collections, I developed a dynamic material that would enhance the interaction between the body and the garment. This is a uh, neoprene fabric that I laser engraved into this mesmerizing line pattern. And these lines, they change their expression along with the body's movement. Fashion is something very intimate and personal. You might not always be aware of it, but your bodies, they are touching clothing or fabrics almost all the time. And this is what makes it the perfect platform to incorporate technology. And not only in terms of functionalities, especially also in creating new ways to communicate identity, because that is also what we do with clothing. So let's look at fashion as an interface between our bodies and our surroundings. And to illustrate that, I'd like to show you a project from 2012. The flipped dress is a kinetic garment that responds to sound. It is made up out of tiny flip dots, which are electromagnetic disks that can flip from one side to the other, revealing either a black or a red color in this case. And not only did I want to mount 600 of these on a garment, I also wanted to address each dot individually so that the garment could function as a kinetic display. So with very limited knowledge about electrical engineering, I put myself to the task to solve this puzzle, which was the wiring diagram and I literally broke my head over it, but I did make it. And I also got the help of uh, Daniel Schatzmeier, who's an electrical engineer. He also calls himself a robot hacker. How cool is that? And together with him, we started making over four and a half thousand soldering connections. This is what it looked like. And you have to believe me, this is a very organized chaos, because otherwise it would have never worked. And then we hooked up Daniel's custom-made PCB, which allowed us to communicate wirelessly with the dress. And this whole project, we finished it in only one month time. And then we took it to Istanbul. It was my first time here, and it was a very wonderful experience because we did an interactive presentation at the design studio of Denise Duru, where the dress was actually responding to the music played by Onur Karagos, a Turkish DJ. So let me show you a, a little video of this design. sound. This is the sound that they're actually making. So they have a very tactile quality, these flip dots, something that digital technology often lacks. And this is a performance piece. I won't expect you to wear this out on the street tomorrow. But I am very interested in creating designs that can enrich our daily lives. So my recent project is called Wearable Solar. And this project started out with the notion that our society highly depends on connectivity. And it's quite easy for me, having all of you here in front of me, to recognize who's addicted to their smartphone. 
This guy here, sending his text. Yeah, a woman over there, sending an email. Maybe someone tweeting about my presentation, hopefully. <laughs> and then I understand, because I'm an addict too. I mean, I would have done the same, so uh, I don't blame you guys. Um, but it's, you know, we want our phones to be constantly powered. But the better our batteries get, the more we'll use them. And there are, in fact, two things we always have with us when we leave the house. Our clothing, at least I hope you are wearing some clothes, and our phone. So why not power our, f our phone through our clothes? With wearable solar, we're integrating flexible solar cells in fashion so that your clothing can generate sustainable energy and you can charge your devices anywhere you go. And I teamed up with Christian Holland, a business developer, and Gert-Jan Jongerde, solar energy expert. And we started looking at various solar cells and the way they could be integrated into textiles. I started looking very closely at the way the solar cells are built. They exist out of many layers that interact with sunlight. And I started comparing this with the stratification of the human skin. And this was then translated into a modular design element where solar cells have been put in compartments that can be revealed when the sun shines or folded away and worn invisibly when they're not directly needed. So we made a coat and a dress, and each design, when worn in full sun for only two hours, will charge your phone from zero to 100%. So listen to this. Oh, can I have my video? <laughs> Tech people, can we have a video here? I wasn't finished. <laughs> yes, getting there. No? Can we try it one more time? Okay, no more video. Let me click through, if I'm allowed. Oh, look what's coming. Tashikalar. <laughs> and some sound, please. Musica. <laughs> it's going to be a silent movie. <laughs> Wearable technology is able to connect different industries that were not connected before. I'm being connected with people from the solar energy industry and we look at what we can mean for each other to uh, advance uh, our idea of what fashion is or could be in the future. While working with wearable technology, you realize what it takes to power all your wearable devices and that you're always carrying these heavy battery packs and then start making these kind of circuits and all the wiring that you need, it's always an issue. So looking at how the wearable technology market is rapidly growing, we need to come up with a more sustainable uh, solution for that. And we can't just rely on batteries forever. Wearable Solar is a project that I started about a year ago, and it started off as a research in how we can implement solar cells into fashion so that your body could actually become a sustainable source of energy. Both designs that I made, the dress and the coat, uh, if you wear them for two hours outside in the sun, they charge your phone from zero to 100%. So basically what we did first is we calculated what the service area would be, so to really have some energy that you can actually do something with. And then we looked at how can they be placed efficiently on the body so that they would capture enough sunlight and would generate energy that, for instance, could power your smartphone. We're all addicted to our smartphones and we want them to be constantly powered. And our garments is something that we always have with us, together with our smartphones. So this was quite an obvious connection. You would never need a battery again. You could just be sustainable and generate your own energy through your clothing. My goal is to make the technology invisible. 
and to really have it working from the inside out. So if we would have a solar cell on a yarn level that could be integrated within the textile of your garment, you could use this fabric that is a solar cell. If you look at solar energy in textile, textile is not something we only use in fashion. So you can think of other applications like sails of, of boats. There are so many surfaces out there in the world that we don't use in such an efficient way. Textile has a lot of properties that other materials don't have, like the flexibility, the bendability. So this could be something that could be further explored. Right now there are a um, few downsides on the prototypes that I have. One of them is the washability. So I'm now looking at uh, solar cells that uh, are encapsulated within a, like a plastic layer so that they can become washable. As a designer in, in wearable tech, you often have to convince um, other industries of the importance of, of working with their technologies in, in fashion. You have to go and knock on the door of a solar energy uh, manufacturer and say like, hey, I want to implement your technology in fashion. Can you make your solar cells washable? I think by adding technology to fashion, we can return uh, fashion's value to people so that they would cherish their garments for a longer period and just not discard it like after a couple months because it's based on trend. Wearable tech definitely invites more people to, uh, to enter the fashion world and to uh, help us uh, create new innovations that make the system better because, I mean, fashion is all about the new, but the industry itself has been the same for, for decades. So it's really time that, that something's been changed. But the industry itself has been the same for, for decades. So it's really time that, that something's been changed. Thank you. So I wasn't completely synced, but I hope you could follow the story. One of the important things I was saying is that by doing this, we're pushing other industries like the solar, and, uh, solar cell industry to come up with textiles that integrate solar cells. And one of the newest designs that I'd like to show you today is going to be worn by Marina here. And it's a dress that integrates the world's most efficient solar panel. And we've integrated it in such a way that it can be removed from the garments so you can wash the garment separate from the panel. And Marina here is going to show us how she's going to plug her phone and charge here in front of you. <laughs> and now we're working with companies to develop this idea further, to come up with a marketable product. And for all the guys out here, we are working also on menswear, so not to worry. So she's charging. Thank you, Marina. <laughs> So ultimately, we can use the generated energy for other interactive qualities, and one of those qualities is light. I'm collaborating with Philips on the integration of LED ribbons in textiles. And light is a very interesting phenomenon to be working with as a designer, because on one hand, we're very much attracted to light. You can also see this in the work of Dan, for instance. But at the same time, when we put light in textile, it instantly becomes this spectacle, this show thing, and no one wants to wear this out on the street every day. It's up on the stage. So our question was, how can we integrate it in a very personal, emotional way? In a way that can be worn daily also, very subtle. And increasing visibility at night. And here I worked with the void. So I created parts that were standing away from the body and we integrated the LED ribbons in such a way that the light was actually shining towards the body. And here you can see how that results in a kind of ambient glowing effect that fits very well with the urban landscape. So as you've seen from all these examples, I'm often trying to unite two seemingly divergent industries. And working in wearable technology requires a new way of thinking about garment construction, about manufacturing, life cycles, repairs, washing. And these are some of the challenges that I'm currently researching as part of my PhD at the University of Technology in Eindhoven. And to conclude, here in Turkey, you are very lucky to really have a big textile and garment manufacturing industry. So I hope that today I've given you a good glance at fashion's future potential. But moreover, I hope that you all will be actively participating in this new and exciting developments. 
Thank you. Tisha Kula.